Welcome to History 102, Origins of the Modern World, 1500 to the Present. I'm Mike Fitzgerald, a professor at the School of Professional Studies, your narrator. I'd like to thank Dr. Jordy Getman, our lead historian at SPS, for overseeing the scripting for this course. In this lecture, we'll introduce the methods you'll be using to explore the history of the world over the last 500 years. So, what is history? Just a bunch of famous people and important dates? Certainly, a lot of folks believe it to be that way. Our argument over the course of this semester will be that history is something different, something more analytical. At a basic level, history can be defined as the study of change over time. Change defines the difference between past and present societies. Without change, we wouldn't need to study history since our societies today would be the same as those in the past. The analysis and understanding of the changes from past to present is at the heart of history as a discipline. So, what kind of changes are we talking about? The list would have to include physical changes in the size of societies or in the way that societies fed themselves, in the way in which they moved. Movement is a very important change in history. There are changes in ideas and attitudes, as well as changes in morals and values. There have also been changes in the law and in governments, regime changes that fundamentally altered the course of our world. There have also been changes in economic systems, some more successful than others. And then there are the changes in everyday life. This is the change that often receives the least attention, but which has most directly affected societies and the individuals that constitute them. Physical changes, changes in ideas, conceptions, moral values, government, economy, all of these come together to create an environment, a world in which people live, at times suffering and at other times flourishing. So now that we know what the study of history includes, why do we study it? Why are you taking this course and why is it important that you understand what happened 500 years ago? There are three reasons we'd like to propose. First. The study of history is important because it allows us to situate ourselves in our world today in all its bewildering complexity. Without understanding the past, the process of change that has led to the present, we can't begin to understand our world. Keep in mind that many past events, even from hundreds or even thousands of years ago, still exert a palpable influence on our world today, like the gravitational pull of a hidden galaxy. For example, conflicts such as those in the Middle East, fueled by the rise of extremist and modern terrorism, are not something that emerged overnight. They have deep historical roots that we need to examine in order to fathom why these phenomena arose and how we can best address them. Second, history is important because it preserves our collective social memory. Just as individuals lose their sense of self when they lose their memory, societies can also lose their identities if they are deprived of their past. And when this happens, profound social transformations can occur. So, from individuals to entire nations, humans understand themselves through their collective and individual memories. Throughout history, societies have revisited their pasts and altered them to fit their evolving needs. Something that may have been morally wrong in the past can become ethically acceptable in the present. Yesterday's enemy can become today's ally. Each of these changes brings subtle shifts in our collective memory, altering our understanding of the past. And these differing interpretations can cause both social unrest and political conflict. So historians have an important role to play. They must serve as both guardians and interpreters of our collective memory. Third, the study of history is important because it encourages us to develop intellectual freedom. Let me explain. Exploration of the past can open your mind to view the world from different perspectives. These different perspectives can liberate you from ideas you've not yet fully examined. Now, I'm not saying you should do away with those ideas. I'm saying that you should be flexible enough to seriously probe them and ask why you accept them. Once you begin this investigation, you'll find yourself surveying a much broader horizon, one that will include a richer understanding of the events of the past 500 years. 
At the beginning of this lecture, we said that we'd be using an analytical approach to the study of history. Next up, we'll take a more detailed look at what that means.